Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. As we continue our little study in some of the difficult questions people ask, I ask well, yesterday I think we talked about what happens to people after death, and we looked at who's the Holy Spirit, and what about contradictions in the Bible. And I, the one I like is, why do I need to go to church? As a, as a pastor, I can answer that question a lot. So, Anyway, we want to see people in church. Is the world going to end soon? That's the question. That's a very prevalent question right now. In fact, there's even books being written about that. Is the world going to end soon? And we don't know, do we? Uh, we have no idea when it's going to be uh, ever since back in the early church days. Um, they thought it could happen any moment, you know, any time back then. We know that Paul, when he uh, wrote First Thessalonians, and he was talking about the rapture there in chapter 4, and he said, then those that are dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we that are alive uh, shall basically follow them. And, and so we know that he was under the understanding it even happened during his lifetime. And so ever since then, people have been trying to guess. Well, it's going to be, I know back in the 1800s, they had a couple different ones guessing it was in the 1800s and early 1900s. And, and the days come and go. And remember, I think it was even when about 2000, a lot of people were talking about it. Is this... Is that going to be the end of the world? The world's only going to last 2,000 years after Christ and all those things. So Jesus probably uh, gave the best um, explanation of what to look forward to. Uh, some people use, use Ezekiel and Daniel and uh, the book of Revelation to try to determine when. But over in Matthew 24, so let's, let's turn over to Matthew 24. And um, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And uh, they're one to know about that, that answer that question. Let's start off in chapter 24, verse number 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He said, Hey, look, at the, here's the temple, and we know that um, from pictures that we've seen, uh, the temple was a compound more than wasn't just a building like we think of a church, but uh, it was a compound where they did all kinds of things and so as far as with their uh, according to the law and so Jesus says going to all come down and in verse 3 and he said upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came to him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world or the end of the age and so Jesus kind of gives a little answer here and then we'll uh, dig into it a little deeper maybe he says that uh, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So all these people come up with all these ideas about when it's going to happen. They have no ideas. Jesus will tell them a little bit here. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But, he said, the end is not yet. So we hear the wars. We have wars going on now. Uh, a couple places that we know about. And there's other hot spots over in the Red Sea and that. So all kinds of things going on. He says, uh, these things uh, are going to need to happen. And so, um, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see not you be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So we see here, it's just the beginning, the birth pains. If you was like uh, a lady getting ready to have her baby and, uh, you know, all the pains that started coming on as, as it gets closer and closer to the uh, delivery uh, moment there. So and he says, don't, this is these things, you're going you're gonna to hear about these things. But he said, that's not the end. This is just kind of leading up to the end. And so that's why we hear so many people say, you know, is, is the end close by? Because of what he said, wars and rumors of wars and all these things. So we see that happening. He said, and then he goes ahead and talks about uh, some other things there in uh, this chapter. But and keep in mind now, this, this chapter, some people get confused. This chapter is not about the rapture. Uh, this chapter is about the tribulation. I want to jump over to verse 36. He says, when we talk about people projecting and saying, hey, this is when it's going to happen. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So he says, nobody, nobody knows it. Only God the Father knows it. And then he goes ahead and gives a little bit more of an indication. He says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
for as in the days they were that were before uh, the flood that they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So he said this is what's going to happen. It's going to be they're not going to know what's going to happen until all of a sudden it's going to take place. And so he's saying that, you know, I think the key is what? Be ready, right? You have to be ready. Uh, I'm going to jump over to verse um, 44. He says here, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. You know, what's he saying? You, you're going to say, oh, no, he ain't coming yet. It's going to be another hundred years. Or not, that things ain't, the time ain't right. He says, you're, go, you're not going to think it's that time, but it's going to be that time. So we talk about being ready, ready for the end times. And people get do get all upset about it. You know, they get fearful. You know, when the end of the world, we know that if you read Revelation, we know there's going to be a horrible seven years there. Through, but you, uh, the good news is, as Christ is talking here, uh, he says that these are the signs of the end times. This it isn't the end times yet. And he goes ahead a little further in that chapter, and he does talk about things that's going to be happening in the tribulation. But the idea is that if you're ready to go, all right, so we don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or 100 years from tomorrow. But we have no idea when it's going to happen. So we know the rapture is going to happen first. And so how do you escape all of that, the wrath of God? You get saved, don't you? What you need to do is be saved, be born into the family of God, and you, the Bible tells us you'll not see his wrath. So that's the idea. So people that get fearful, as a Christian, you don't need to be fearful. You know, you won't be here in the tribulation. That's one of the things I try to emphasize uh, to people when they uh, Christians get upset. You know, they don't want to they don't want to read the book of Revelation because of, of all the horrible things that are going to happen. But keep in mind, there are horrible things. It's going to be quote unquote hell on earth during that period of time. But for the Christian, we're not going to be here. The Christ is going to come. That's the purpose of the rapture is to take the church out of the world so the judgment can be brought down on the world. And um, we don't need to see that happening, so we're going to see the rapture and then the tribulation and then the second coming. And that's kind of what they're talking about here. See, when he said the, the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. So what they're looking they don't they're not familiar with the uh, rapture, because the rapture hadn't been revealed yet until we see it in 1 Corinthians. But the idea is that he said, what's going to be the sign of your coming, your second coming? What they want to see is they want to see the kingdom set up. They're looking for the kingdom to be set up, and we know uh, the kingdom they're looking for would be the thousand-year reign of Christ. So when he comes back in Revelation 19 to set up that kingdom, and that's what they're talking about. When are you going to come back and set up your kingdom? You're leaving. You've told us you're going to leave. So when are you, when are you going to set this kingdom up so that we can see that'll be at the end of the world, at the end of the age? So we're looking at, we're in the day of, or the quote-unquote, age of grace right now. And so we know that the age of grace will carry on through until the rapture happens and that. So, but what you need to do, what you really need to do is be born into the family of God. You, it's good to read about all these things, about the rapture, and about the tribulation, the second coming, the millennium, new heaven, new earth. Those are all great things to read about, but they're only beneficial to those people that know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. See, Jesus died for the sins of the world. He died for all the sins of all the world, but only those that repent and turn and put your faith and trust in that shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for their sins. Get the benefit of that. You know, it's getting the, the benefit. There's, there's a lot of things in life that are out there, but you have to do some things to get the benefit of it. And that's what he's talking about there. To get the benefit of forgiveness of sins through the shed blood, you must repent and turn to him and believe from your heart that Jesus did die on the cross, that he did pay the price for your redemption. So when you do that, you will be guaranteed eternal life. Jesus said, that you'll have life eternal, and that's what he has for you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us as your children as we look to forward to the rapture, and we look forward to that day, Lord, when you take your church out of here, your body of Christ. And we just pray for those that don't know Jesus, that they'll come to know Christ before it's too late. We ask you just to work in their hearts and lives in a way that blesses you, and we know they'll be getting the best. And we'll praise you for all you're going to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.